Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus today. I know that's weird to say, it's weird to probably hear. D News Plus is our new name. We've always been associated with D News. Now we're just kind of making it official. So thanks for tuning in today. This is episode one of five in our new series on formation. The formation of all sorts of stuff from humans to planets to solar systems and galaxies, the whole universe. And we have a special episode five coming up for you, so stick around. If you don't wanna wait that long, you can go down into the description below and click to subscribe to our iTunes feed and get an audio podcast of this whole series all together. It's great. And also, as you're going down there, you'll notice that there's this new bar. We've got like a whole new look. On the bar is different parts of this episode. You should be able to click and jump from one to another so that you don't have to maybe sit through something you already know. Or if you want to rewatch something because it was so awesome, which we hope it's the second one. So anyway, this week we're talking about formation. So let's start with the formation of Earth. The ultimate question that we ask ourselves pretty much any time, right, is, is why are we here? How did we get here? And scientists have been working on answering that question for as long as there have been scientists. I mean, evolution is a great answer, you know, thanks, Charlie Darwin. But, uh, you know, we evolved over time, over a long, long time. Yeah, now we're Homo sapiens sapien, but we started walking upright and we made tools and we started using language and all of these different things as we go backward. And so let's kind of walk through that a little bit. First, no, there are a lot of people out there who say we came from monkeys. We did not come from monkeys. They're like a distant cousin. We are closely related to apes and are in fact primates, but we didn't come from them. We share an ancestor with another ancient ape. The gorilla and the chimp also have that same common ancestor, but we all broke off of them and evolved in different ways. The ancestor probably lived between five and eight million years ago, meaning all of the primates that we have split from that and happened back in Africa, obviously. As time went on, uh, species broke off into a variety of different human-like species as well and spread across the planet. Make sure you check out our series on how that happened as well. Some scientists say about 15 to 20 different species of early man did exist throughout history. And about 60 to 80,000 years ago, our specific ancestors, the Homo sapiens, started to leave Africa. Although some say it was a little earlier than that. And uh, we went to Asia, we went to Europe, North and South America, only about 15,000 years ago. Not that long when you look at millions of years of evolution. Homo sapiens have become the only species of human on our planet over that time. Sorry, Neanderthals. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But now we're here, you know, we've evolved our way up and we got the internet. Some stuff happened between leaving Africa and, you know, evolving and stuff. But either way, we got the internet, we got Beyonce, we're good. But going back further, like way further than that, the earliest evidences of life is like the formation of Earth as we know it, right? It changed Earth forever. Last October, there was possible evidence of the earliest life that was found in Australia. 4.1 billion years ago, they think life may have started. 4.1 billion years, that's a long time. And that's 300 million years earlier than previously thought with evidence that we'd found before. So scientists found in Western Australia this fleck of graphite. Just a little fleck of graphite. And it was in a 4.1 billion year old crystal that was found in Western Australia. The graphite has a carbon structure, which was similar to carbon that was produced by living organisms. However, they do admit that there are possibilities to how this carbon could have gotten there. They're not 100% sure that it was life, but it's likely. And there has been evidence of organisms in rocks found in Greenland 3.8 billion years ago, Australia 3.5 billion years ago about, and they're both questioned by scientists, they're both controversial. I mean, most evidence that is that old and is that limited is controversial, but even without definite evidence, most scientists agree that life began between 2.7 billion and 3.8 billion years ago. You know, they really narrowed it down there. <laughs> like a billion years, give or take, I guess, half billion years, give or take. And they admit that this obviously will change. They'll assess and reassess as new stuff is found like they did in Australia. The first organisms that evolved were likely single-celled, but that also is kind of shrouded in mystery. It happened billions of years ago. We're not exactly sure what they were, what they did. We just have theories and our best guesses based on the evidence that we found that survived for that many years. Uh, one source that we read put it perfectly. Early on, it was the transition from chemistry to biology, where pre-life was chemistry. 
Now we've got biology. Basically, a long time ago, the Earth did not have life on it, right? But it did have the building blocks to make life. More specifically, actually, it had the building blocks of the building blocks, you know, like it had the stuff that you make the bricks out of to build the house. <laughs> and once you can make the bricks, then you can do all sorts of other stuff. Organic materials actually came from inorganic materials. And there's a theory that you might be thinking of right now. Uh, stop thinking of primordial soup. Just stop. Just pretend like that never happened. Earth's oceans, uh, under the old theory of primordial soup, were full of chemical compounds that was hit with a bunch of lightning strikes like Frankenstein, and that started a reaction that grew the first organic compounds. But the new theory, I don't want to make a pun here, but I'm going to make a pun, holds a little more water. It's about hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. And essentially, the hot pressurized water from vents, essentially underwater volcanoes or pressure release systems underground, are containing all of these different dissolved gases as well as minerals like iron and nickel. And those things, when they get together, sometimes can cause reactions. We've seen it even today. And the chain reactions that can be caused in these perfect little primitive life environments can essentially cause the emergence of life. This is why, if you remember from our series on uh, space volcanoes, NASA is looking for space volcanoes because a volcano has heat, minerals, or nutrients, and then that can create life. Of course, there are other theories. There's the RNA world hypothesis, which is, they call it a primordial soup, but still, remember, that's weird. And out of that primordial soup came self-replicating RNA, and that could have happened in the vents as well, the hydrothermal vents. These aren't mutually exclusive theories. Uh, it could have also happened on another planet, space volcanoes again, and then maybe came here on an asteroid in the theory known as panspermia, or the idea that an asteroid crashed and, and seeded our planet with life. The RNA are the things that did all of the work, and they existed before DNA existed, before life, obviously, as we know it existed, and they stored information just like our DNA does, and they started chemical processes like creating proteins. And this was the reactions that helped create the first life. And obviously, this is all very complicated, and it requires an understanding of a number of different fields of science. And we could do a whole series just on this whole topic, and it's hard to take these complex ideas and sum them up as, as concisely as we can. But to put it simply, when the Earth was new, the single cells eventually evolved, becoming cyanobacteria, which are you know, algae, blue-green algae. Then those organisms started producing oxygen. At the time, there wasn't really oxygen on our planet. This was a waste product of photosynthesis for these early organisms, and they would poop out this oxygen into the sea, and then that would float up into the atmosphere, and after, you know, a long time, like a billion years, because this was like two and a half billion years ago, and then another billion years later, there was enough oxygen in Earth's atmosphere to start evolution, and it was just a whole different planet after that. 800 million years ago, the Placozoa was the last common ancestor of all animals. This is the great, 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 like ellipsis, grandpappy of everyone. But then, of course, after that, there's a lot more evolving and diversification of species all across the planet. Organisms started to move on their own. Vertebrates appeared. We went on land. Plants evolved. Insects became a thing. Amphibians, dinosaurs, extensions, repopulations, birds, warm-blooded animals, mammals, primates, us, Beyonce. It's the best. But that's life. And Earth was here before life. But what was that like, you know? We sort of skimmed over that bit. So we're going to have to zoom out a little bit. So after a series of huge space events, Earth formed about four and a half billion years ago. Once it was formed, it was not particularly hospitable. First came the Hadean Eon. Comes from the Greek word Hades. Doesn't make it sound like a very nice place to visit, so known as the underworld. And this is a time that we know very little about because nothing really survived from that period because the Earth formed from space dust and gravity and it started as a molten planet that eventually cooled forming all sorts of different layers of sediment based on any number of different pressures and density changes and things. And as that happened, you know, it's not like they were, somebody was writing it down. Once it cooled enough to form uh, a protoplanet, more or less, we move into a more cooled, solid planet system. And then that's the start of the Archaean Eon, from the word meaning ancient, because this is the time of our oldest rocks. 
The atmosphere was toxic, it had very small traces of oxygen, and by the end of this era was those first photosynthesizing organisms that I mentioned, the blue-green algae, and that completely changed the planet. So it's kind of giving you a lowdown there. But that's our story. That's how we got here. Earth was created from dust and gravity, which we'll get into very soon, and slowly that transformed into a big magma ball, which is a cool band name, and then an oxygen planet, which made life thrive, and over time, the life split off into different lives, being apes, and then came us and the internet and Beyonce. So, it's great. But, that doesn't really answer the question of formation, like, what about all the other planets that were floating around out there? How come our planet got to be so special? How come all those other planets don't look like our planet? What about the whole solar system needs to be explained? So make sure you subscribe to the show. You can do that. Click the button right down there, at the bottom of the screen. Also, while you're down there, leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the new DNews Plus look. And come find me over on Twitter. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching.